So we started out on the interest of this property and did some loan house and group house and got a few to talk on the other end of the property. So we made a move through the wood line to pop out on the other side of this little field. And as you can see here, this is kind of the corner we were in. And on the whole other end of this road is where this coyote came popping out. So to the right side of us was all field. And where we were, the moon wasn't lighting us up too bad, but we had the ability to kind of hide a little bit. Well, this one started walking directly down. We picked it up right before we were about to leave. I started scanning before we were going to move to our next set and saw it pop out of the wood line. So we just stayed still. I played some really low uh, rabbit calls just to kind of get it coming in a little bit more and a little bit more. And as it would stop, I would kind of turn it off and the curiosity kind of got the best of it and it kept coming and coming. And well, right there at the very end, you can see where that coyote kind of stops and looks at us. Well, I was kind of adjusting my tripod a little bit and we figured that's that's going to be our time to take a shot. And I think that coyote was like right at 70 yards. And you can see right here at the very bottom of my scope, that's actually where the call is at. So the call is directly facing that coyote. So this was a fresh piece of dirt that we had never hunted before. And one side of it was cotton and then the other side was peanuts that had been turned. And then what we didn't know is on the other side of that was actually a uh, cornfield that had been completely cut and mowed. Well, we parked out here in the middle and as soon as we did, started some group howls and a, a lonely howl and we, they started lighting it up. Well, I picked up here on the ST6, two way off in the distance, coming in. And I think this just didn't work out like we thought it would. They were trying to work downwind of us. I was really hoping they would come in a little closer, but what we didn't know is they were running directly down the area where the peanuts meet the cornfield because the peanuts at this point hadn't been picked. They had only been rolled and the cornfield was completely flat. So it was like they were walking directly down that area to get to it. So, and this was a pair. Uh, Thomas and I were on the one in the back and Stephen was on the one in the front. So here, Thomas and I are just kind of communicating back and forth with Stephen, trying to figure out what we really want to do here as the first coyote is still working down that path and getting closer and closer. And our concern was that if it got downwind of us, they will both take off. So we're just kind of playing it back and forth of, of what to do at this point, because that second dog is just a little, little far out there for a shot. So after that one spun and took off, we ended up putting it down. Now number 36, <laughs> I didn't get any video of that one at all. We, we ended up shooting that as soon as we got out of the truck at a, at a sit. Two. 
So this was probably one of the funnest hunts out of all of these. Um, we got a chance to get uh, a father and both his daughters on their first thermal hunt. Uh, it was really nice to to not always be behind a gun, but have somebody else behind it and help get them their first kayak. We actually ended up getting this on their first sit. We had a pair come in. Um, they crossed through the ditch. One of them did. The other one was kind of hanging out in the bottom of the ditch. I was watching it. And Steven and Riley were both watching this one as it was kind of trying to sneak on downwind of us. And they both pulled a, a great shot on it and got her her first coyote uh, with a thermal. Are you ready? Three, two, one. So the area we were hunting was extremely wide open and I mean you could see thousand yards in every direction and this particular one we saw it way off in the distance um, we had to win to our advantage broke out some single howl calls everything seemed to be responding real well to it and we watched this one walk all the way in uh, for the family to get their second one of the night uh, I did speed this up a little bit because it was kind of long. Steven had recorded it the whole way in. Three, two, one. Tatered. Yes. <laughs>